Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show today. It's all about Sage Functional Health. Yes, that's the website, sagefunctionalhealth.com. And we're here with the owner, uh, Dr. Sherry uh, Vainsek. And she's here from Fair Oaks, California, but working with clients all over the world. And I would love for you to tell us about your mission of uh, integrating, you know, patients and, of course, doing what you do for really holistic types of um, medicine, in a sense, to really help us maintain our health. So let me start off by saying... Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you're listening and watching from. How are you? Yeah. I'm great, Jill. Thank you. All right. Please introduce yourself. Go ahead. Yes. So I'm Dr. Sherry Vincek, and I I practice functional medicine, mostly nutrition, and uh, I work with women's health, hormones, gut, brain, autoimmunity, and I'm very passionate about this because we really have no choice but to stay healthy and maintain our health, right? Because without our health, we have nothing. Mm-hmm. So um, last week we talked about hormones and um, there was so much to say. So I thought I would pick up where I left off and then I would throw in some information about the microbiome, estrobiome, and thyroid because they're all hormones and they're all talking and reacting and functioning together. Beautiful. So um, if that's okay, so the we talked about how powerful hormones are, right? They can create life, sustain life. They make us feel joyful and youthful. They help us with our libido. And, but we need to have balanced hormones. We need to have our sex steroid hormones, all our estrogens, progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, pregnenolone. We need the whole picture. And then we need all our thyroid hormones. So what do we do if our hormones are out of balance. You know, we don't really know what to ask for if we don't know what we don't know. So this is what I really want to help women understand is that you need to be asking for big panels and big pictures so that uh, a a bigger functional scope can be put together for you, especially during transitions, right? We talked about puberty all the way up to postmenopause last time. um, And we talked about unexplained weight gain and headaches and breast tenderness, uh, night sweats, insomnia, PMS, rage. I mean, Mm -hmm. women have, you know, depression, irritability, rage that week before their period. So um, these are all little signs and signals and red flags that our hormones are a bit amiss and, and we can do so much better. And I mean, we tune our car up more times in a year than we check in in our hormones. And we don't have to, you know, there are periods of our life where we're not, nece- not necessarily we're having to be checking too much, but then there are periods like that we have to check a lot, maybe conception or infertility or young puberty girls having horrible cycles, mm-hmm. um, missing periods. And then of course, perimenopause. So um, it's really like a great symphony. And I, I just want to um, reiterate the importance that there are three different estrogens. And we talked about estradiol, estrone, and and estriol, which is E3. And estradiol is made from the ovaries. So we have that most of our life. And then the estrone picks up in midlife when the estradiol is going down as we approach menopause. And that is made in the fat cells and the adrenals. But if we're really burned out and, and stressed out and our sympathetic nervous system is, you know, shot through the roof from so much stress, then we don't have the capacity to maybe have that backup. But this is, these are all three estrogens are important. So you have to look at all three when you get a hormone panel. And we also have to check the guys because hormones can, um, they call it downstream, which means there's enzymes and they aromatase into each other. So testosterone can aromatase into estrogen. And that's really important because this is where men get that belly, that metabolic syndrome. And a lot of men are very high in estrogen and they do not know it. And we see this in young teenage boys with the gynomastia, this breast tissue, you know, you see them at the park and the swing pool. And I feel so bad because that's excess estrogen and that needs to be cleared. And that can be done with diet and supplements, but they need to know that, right? And the other estrogen, that E3 is a very protective estrogen. Western medicine considers it biologically weak, so they don't talk about it, but um, weak does not mean Weak does not mean it's not powerful because it's very protective for the brain and the vagina. And the great thing is it has no breast receptor sites. So women who have had breast cancer, who have our vaginal dryness, um, can use this estrogen and, and be, feel really 
care, you know, um, feel safe about it. So we need to monitor our hormones because no body is the same. We have different enzymes. We have different liver detoxification capacity. So when our hormones are going to be cleared out of the body, they come through the liver. They have to go through a phase one and a phase two liver detoxification. And then hopefully they go to the intestines and end up coming out in feces and go to the urine and come out as pee. But if the um, microbiome of the gut isn't healthy, then we don't break down those estrogens. So pretty much everybody's heard of a microbiome, which is all the back, different bacteria in the gut because the gut has become a, a very um, a popular uh, topic, right? In, in, in all the media, gut brain axis and the relationship of the gut to immunity, et cetera. But what most people don't know is we have an estrobiome. So that's a collection of bacteria in the gut that's specific job is to metabolize estrogen. And that can only happen if there's good ratios of bacteria to break down the estrogen. And if we have a lot of dysbiotic or unbalanced flora, then the estrogen's being reabsorbed. And this is how women become really estrogen dominant. It's not so much that they're making uh, too much estrogen. It's just not clearing out and reabsorbing. And then you throw in all those xenoestrogens from the environment, like the plastics and all the hormones and animal food that goes into the, you know, water system and uh, chemicals, pesticides, et cetera, they wow. all can mimic estrogen receptors. Mm -hmm. So the good news is the microbiome is there to protect us and it changes across our lifespan, which means that gives us control. So what we eat, the food we eat, um, the starches and the fibers, those things make good bacteria. They make good prebiotics and probiotics. And we can change our microbiome just like we can change our ratio of hormones. And this should be a very empowering piece because, you know, we don't really, we shouldn't just take diagnoses or imbalance or our symptoms as end all be all. We have the power to change this. We just need to know what to do. And um, the diversity of the gut becomes very important here. So we need a really vast, rich microbiome. And that comes from eating a variety of different foods. And all of us kind of get into the rut of eating the same vegetables and the same food. And this, this is especially true for people that don't like to cook or uh, people who have a lot of food allergies, right? They, they narrow down their diet and they narrow down their diet and they think that they're protecting themselves by doing that. Well, there's two sides to that coin because they're making their microbiome less diverse. And the less diverse microbiome is the less protective microbiome. So there's a, a really good, um, easy way to uh, increase your microbiome's diversity. And that is you go out and you buy 10 or 12 vegetables that you hardly ever eat. You maybe go get some Asian vegetables and different types of vegetables and you put them in a Vitamix and grind them up and you make them into a, a mush and or a mash. And then you put it into little jars or little baggies and you just eat a couple tablespoons a day. This is a way to get all these different starches and fibers, which then enrich your microbiome and then which enrich the breakdown of your own hormones. So no two people are the same and no two people have the same microbiome or um, estrobiome. So knowing that no two people uh, very often can take the same a thyroid prescription or, or amount. There's different types of thyroid hormones. Uh, there's, you know, bioidentical, there's synthetic, and there's different applications of taking them. So kind of the moral of this story is we are all so unique and our biochemistries are so unique and we have to really pay attention to ourselves and li listen to ourselves because, you know, very often uh, women go to see their primary doctor or whoever their health practitioner is, and they're not really listened to around the symptoms that they're having. We saw this a lot with women having endocrine disruption during COVID when they were going to their doctor saying, oh, I'm losing my period. I had a miscarriage and I know this is because blah, blah, blah. And they really weren't being listened to. So we did a lot of talking about estrogen. And I just wanted to do a shout out to progesterone because progesterone <laughs> is a savior. It's what balance out estrogen. It is our savior as women because it makes us feel relaxed and it's an anti-anxiety. And progesterone goes to the roof, the third 
trimester of pregnancy. And there's a reason for that. Well, I I just want I just went to the OBGYN the other day and, you know, here I am at 45 (laughs) um, complaining of lack of sex drive, um, dryness, um, all this that you've been talking about. (laughs) And it happened to be day three. Plus, now I'm getting my period like every two weeks instead of, uh, you know, every four weeks. It's maybe perimenopause, I guess, beforehand. So all he did, though, I go to Quest and he. I didn't get the results back. Yes. But so technically it's day three. And I know he just te- tests the basics, the estradiol, the the day three LH, FH. I don't know these things, but it's it's so funny because yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he's testing these specifics that you're talking about. Regular doctors don't do that, do yeah, they? You, right. This is you yeah. also I just want to. This is so good. You're bringing this up because. I personally like salivary tests. I said that last time because yeah. when you're testing hormones in the blood, you're testing a uh, hormone attached to a protein. And that protein has to be cleaved off that uh, hormone to be able to get into the receptor site. So you really never know if the protein got cleaved off. But with salivary, you know. But you have to test on day 22 of your cycle because that's when progesterone peaks and progesterone's our savior. So if ours doesn't peak and we don't know that, this is not good. And then also you can, when you get towards perimenopause or you're having really irregular cycles, you can do, um, uh, uh, it's, it's where you t- take your saliva every three days during the month, an expanded panel, and you get to see all these gentle fluctuations of LH and FH and estrogen. That's and what I was just going to dance. ask. So the salivary test yeah. would be day 22 as well as a blood test, or you recommend a normal salivary or- test. Yeah. Normal salivary test is day 22. Even a blood test should be day 22. But how do you know day 22 if your periods are irregular? Because did I really get my period or right. am I just, That's how when do you, you just know? Take it. You just got to do the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You just, you just take, you, it'd be best to do the expanded panel because at least you get to see what's happening in a month. But okay. I just want to say that perimenopause equates to the perfect storm because we have a brain that's been used to all this estrogen and progesterone and LH and FSH, and it's not getting it. So it goes into withdrawal and the feedback loops are all slowing down because we're getting towards menopause and it can be a crazy time. And, and it's, it's also a hard time in life because, you know, our adrenals are a little bit overworked and we've been pushing for quite a while. So um, perimenopause is dear to my heart because I had a really hard time with it. And, um, if I had known what I knew when I'd say my progesterone tested, he told me I was going down like the Titanic. It was so, so low. Um, it was ridiculously low. So progesterone helps with our brain. It helps with night flashes, insomnia, makes us feel relaxed, makes us feel comfortable in ourselves. It's a girl's best friend. So I really, everybody really needs to know their progesterone level, especially check it at day 22, because yeah. that's when it peaks. We want to know if it's the peak, right? And there's another important piece. There's the word progesterone and pres- progestins are used interchangeably in papers and, and articles that come out. Progestins are synthetic. That's what was in the old, old hormone replacement, the Premarin and Provera. And that's what's in birth control pills. Progesterone is what's in bioidentical hormones. And that's a natural substance. It's identical to our progesterone. So it makes me crazy because I do a lot of work with preventing cognitive decline because cognitive decline starts in our forties and we don't know that. So again, we have to know what to look for. But I saw an article that came out two days ago and it talked about cognitive decline is exacerbated with progesterone. And I thought, well, that's crazy making. That just doesn't make sense. So I looked at the article and they were using progestins. Most people wouldn't think to do that. So it's just just to know that the word progesterone Mm -hmm. can be used instead of progestin. And progestins are are synthetic and and they also block our natural receptor from taking in natural progesterone. So for some people, they're fine. For some people, they're uh, crazy making because they are. So- Before I move on to thyroid, I just want to read this little case history to you. So this is a woman, and she said, in my 30s, I began having adrenal fatigue, night sweats, low energy, irregular menstruation. I was exhausted from balancing graduate school and work. I ended a relationship. I just ended a relationship. I felt horrible. I felt like my hormones were off, but I didn't know where to turn to. I was referred to Dr. Sherry. I'm so grateful. She really helped me see the connection to stress, high cortisol, my hormones, diet, Mm -hmm. nutrition. We ran functional specialty tests and I was able to see for myself 
the imbalance in my system. After three months, my periods became normal, my energy increased, and I felt more balanced than I had in years. So that's kind of the typical, um, I think, women that I see. You know, everyone's kind of going through some kind of change or another. But very often, women will bring in their mothers or grandmothers or great-grandmothers. And this is a beautiful one. This is an 82-year-old woman. She had terrible spasms in her leg, affected her sleep, severe, near, severe nerve pain in her thighs, mostly at night. She was up every hour to go to the bathroom. Mm. As soon as she said that, my brain went ding, 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 progesterone, okay. because progesterone makes the uterine wall relax and we can hold more urine. So Ooh. it's a God saver for that. So she, she was sleeping during the day. She said she, she wasn't fun to talk to anymore. She had low moods, low thinking, and um, she couldn't get out of her chair to do things, blah, blah, blah. So we tested her hormones. She had none. She had almost no hormone in every single category. Wow. I'd never seen that before. Every sex steroid hormone, every thyroid hormone, gone. Progesterone was almost nil on the test. So she got um, <clears throat> compounded uh, creams to rub in and, and make it easy for herself so she wouldn't be swallowing pills. It was all put together. And she said in four weeks, she only gets up to the bathroom two times a night. She sleeps much better, no pain in her legs. Unless she exerts herself, she gets to use her stationary bike. She's quicker in her thoughts, her humor's back, and she sees color more clearly. Like that has got to be her hormones hitting brain receptors, right? This color that was so great. And um, so this is fantastic, but how many women out there are suffering, right? So if you have a mother or grandmother and they tell you of these symptoms, right? Having to urinate all night and not thinking clearly and just mood and, you know, being depressed, they need hormones. And, and like I said in last week's talk, the North American uh, Menopausal Society came out in 2017 and finally redacted the ridiculous statement that was made before that women didn't need hormones after the age of 65. So now the common knowledge is that yes, women still need, you know, uh, hormones after 65 because it protects our heart, our brain, our vaginal tissue makes us feel better, makes us feel like we want to be part of life. So I'm going to definitely run out of time again, but I'm going to talk about the thyroid real quick. So, Oh, it's funny you said that. My dad's doctor just called and said his levels were Okay. It's so funny. I'm not kidding you. This morning, my father called. So I had to send, um, I mean, the doctor called and I said, okay, uh, it's okay. Follow up with the nephrologist. 6.6 is this thyroid. It's too high. Need to repeat in four weeks. It could be a hypothyroidism or something. I don't know what that means, but that's funny. My dad's 76, yeah. but I just got that call. <laughs> yeah. So, so a, a TSH is a measure of hypothyroidism and the higher it goes, the worse it is. So mm-hmm. that's important. It should not go over three. I, I say oh, 2.8. So when yeah, you get 6.2, because these, these labs are antiquated. Many of them say that's okay to be to four, 4.5. When you get into six territory, you are into hypothyroidism. And there are subclinical signs, I'm sure. So if you looked at all the, you know, pulled up a list of hypothyroid symptoms, cold hands, cold feet, memory fog, uh, constipation, metabolism, slow morning starter, your dad would check off a couple of those boxes. Right? I give people these lists to just check off. Yeah. Um, so, the, but the thing is doctors just run TSH and maybe T4, but we need to see the whole picture because it is not, even if your TSH is okay, you still might be having subclinical hypothyroidism because the numbers are off from different labs and people don't know that it really should be under three. But I do wanna say that we need to run a whole panel, just like with hormones, we wanna see a f- total T4, total T3, free T3, free T4, uh, reverse T3, but T3, free T3 it is the most important here thyroid hormone, because it goes to every receptor in the body. You need zinc, you need selenium, you need vitamin D for, to make this thing work. It goes to the brain. There were studies in Stanford about women who are on SSRIs with depression, and they uh, could could not come out of their depression. And they tested their thyroid. They were low in T3. When they added T3, all of a sudden, their depression lifted, their SSRIs wow. were working. E3 is so important for the brain and it's so important for metabolism. It sets that metabolic rate. It helps us get up in the morning and do our day. And I, it is missed so many times. And the second thing that's missed is either f- at least 50%, maybe 70% of hypothyroidism 
is Hashimoto's. And Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease in which our own immune system kind of gets mixed up and it starts attacking our own tissue. And you have to test thyroid antibodies. And I would say to every person out there who's never, who suspects that they have a thyroid issue to test your thyroid antibodies, because I've seen thyroid antibodies in girls seven and eight years old, and they would be destined for a life of less and less thyroid tissue because that um, immune system would keep attacking their thyroid and they would have weight gain and depression and um, uh, just low mood and irritability. You know, they would feel horrible. So with the thing with antibodies is you have to test thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroid globulin antibodies. You need to test both of those antibodies. And autoimmunity gets triggered and it's genetic. It's sitting there waiting to express itself, but it's kind of like the spokes on a wheel. If you take one or two spokes off that wheel will still work. But if you pop out about 15 of those spokes, the wheel's not going to work well. Well, that's how genetics are. It's kind of a little teetering that you may express this autoimmune disease or you may not, but then there's these triggers and gluten is a trigger for thyroid insulin surges, infections, pathogens, estrogen dominance, because estrogen will compete on receptor sites for T3. It'll bump off T3. Um, estrogen can really be a bully, especially estrone, even though we need it if there's too much of it. So um, we really need to do full thyroid panels. And, and we really, at least if we haven't one time checked and in New York is a tough state because they don't let a lot of outside states do um, direct testing. But like in California, we have contracts where we can do wholesale thyroid testing and we can do like 10 thyroid markers for $88. Mm -hmm. That's an wow. incredible price, you know, so people can shop around who are listening to this podcast that direct labs, uh, principal labs, even life extension often deals that you can get these checked because um, if you don't have health insurance, these, these add up. And so, you know, you can fix your thyroid with medication, which is efficacious and important if you need it. You can do great nutraceuticals. There's great supplements out there for thyroid. Uh, sometimes women need iodine. If you have Hashimoto's, iodine is contraindicated. You shouldn't be okay. taking high amounts, but we all need to know our triggers. You know, once that's a nut, that's another nut roll kind of, once you figure out if you're, you do yeah. have an autoimmune thyroid, then you have to figure out the triggers. And there's a lot of good books out there. So, um, you know, we have the right to know, we have the right to know our full thyroid panels, our full sex steroid panels, how they're working together. And if your doctor is not open to ordering them, which happens in a lot of HMOs or even aware enough to open them, to run them, then you need to search other places to get them right. Salivary panels, I can mail to anybody to do, and, and they can send in and, and then 24 hour urine tests are another way to do that. Um, so I hope this information, you know, helps, um, you have decision-making about your hormones and kind of puts you in yeah. the driver's seat because Thank we you. need to ask and we need to kind of demand a little bit, right? Yeah. This is what I'd like to know. I'd like to know all my sex steroid hormones and I'd like to see, uh, you know, my thyroid hormones as well. And I want to have my thyroid antibodies run, especially if there is celiac disease in the family because okay. celiac and Hashimoto's to run together. Okay. Very common. In fact, when you have one autoimmune disease, they say there's usually two behind it, but okay. they may not express themselves in the lifetime. They may or may not. Right. So, um, yeah, so this oh, is it. We need to start you. thinking of our gut and brain and, th and hormones and put it all together. And we can contact yeah. you. We can do these type of tests with you anywhere. Right. Yeah, Around that's the right. World. They can you be can mailed. So perfect. Tell us how we can reach you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, my email is sagefunctionalhealth at gmail.com and my website is sagefunctionalhealth.com. Uh, and I just got my website up last week. So Yay. I do not have it, an integrated Facebook or Instagram account yet with that. That's fine. So if somebody's trying to find me there, they won't. But my website says it all. I mean, I think it pretty much says what right. I do. Thank yeah. you so much. Pleasure having you here again. You have a fantastic day. You, Great seeing you in person. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.